Hello and welcome to part two of CRT on BRT, Citizens for Regional Transit, talking about bus rapid transit for the Buffalo Amherst Metro Corridor. Today we're going to focus on comparing Buffalo, New York with Bogota, Colombia with regard to bus rapid transit. This is Jim Gordon, treasurer of Citizens for Regional Transit, and I'll be narrating this video. I wondered why Bogota was always the poster child, and it turns out that its former mayor, Enrique Penalosa, became president of an organization called the Institute for Transportation and Development Policy, and they do consulting around the world. Other organizations that promote bus rapid transit are the Rockefeller Foundation and Embark, which is funded by Shell Oil. Mayor Penalosa deserves tremendous credit for promoting and implementing a large-scale public transit project in a car-centric city. By all measures, Bogota's BRT implementation was among the very best in the world. Based on predictions made in CRT's video, CRT on BRT Part 1, I wondered how BRT was doing in Bogota. I even contemplated taking a trip there to check it out. Was BRT still a smashing, money-saving success? Or did it turn out to be a costly albatross? Thankfully, on December 7th, 2023, the New York Times ran a feature article online about Bogota's BRT system. The Times saved me thousands of dollars on travel expenses. Listen to this quote from the December 7th New York Times. Today Bogota's rapid bus system serves about 2 million riders a day. It is also among the city's most embattled institutions. The reasons are not mysterious. Not long after Transmilenio's first flush of success, riders began to find themselves packed into sweltering sardine cans, which broke down and were poorly policed. Women reported being molested. The very popularity of the buses made them crowded and dangerous. They also suffered the whims of constantly shifting city administrations. After Penalosa, a succession of mayors at first pushed Transmilenio along, and then increasingly neglected it. Buses aged and weren't replaced. Those first 71 miles of bus lanes were supposed to grow into 241 miles, but the additional miles were never built, as promises were broken, and service declined. One mayor became linked to a scheme to embezzle millions of dollars and was sentenced to 18 years in prison. The stolen money was supposed to go for Transmilenio and new roads. Four days later, the New York Times ran another story on Bogota's BRT. This was a front-page story with a huge print edition spread inside. Buffalo can learn from Bogota's experience as we contemplate the Amherst Metrorail extension project. This is Bogota in 1900. There is a streetcar system. People are walking freely in the middle of the streets. There's no parking because there are no cars. This is a livable, walkable, sustainable neighborhood with mixed-use buildings. This is downtown Buffalo, New York's central business district on Labor Day in 1900. There was no parking for cars. There were zero cars. No space was allocated for cars. Buffalo's bustling central business district is the direct result of the streetcar system. With streetcars, there was room for people and mixed-use buildings and beautiful architecture. Fifty years later, cars rapidly replaced people downtown. In the late 1940s and 1950s, Buffalo and Bogota were about the same size. Both cities removed streetcars and replaced them with personal cars. Today, Bogota's population is about four times the size of Buffalo's. Bogota and Buffalo took very different approaches to urban planning. While both cities focused heavily on cars and car infrastructure, Bogota went all in on cars, while Buffalo offered some resistance to the overwhelming pressure to always put cars first. In terms of public transportation, Buffalo quickly sought to restore at least some of its former streetcar and rail infrastructure. Bogota, on the other hand, deliberately chose bus rapid transit to save money. Bogota designed their bus rapid transit specifically for poor people instead of investing in light rail. There were many in Bogota who thought light rail rapid transit would be a better investment, but the rail rights of way had already been given over to cars and highways. 
Buffalo and Bogota share the concept of a central business district downtown and unsustainable urban sprawl elsewhere. Buffalo has a radial street plan with a mix of urban arterials, urban expressways, city streets, the University at Buffalo's Stampede bus rapid transit system, and metro rail and metro bus transit. Buffalo is experimenting with smart street designs and autonomous vehicles. Bogota is a grid system where the highway department appears to have been given free reign. All planning is centered around cars and highways. There is a small amount of space reluctantly allocated to the bus rapid transit system. Three video links showing Buffalo and Bogota are in the video description below the video you're currently watching. Please take a moment to watch these three videos. Notice how cars replaced people with enormous amounts of space being devoted to parking and urban highways. Buffalo is converting its bus fleet to battery electric vehicles that emit zero greenhouse gases. Buffalo's metro rail emits zero greenhouse gases and it does not emit any harmful microplastics from tires. Most people in Buffalo don't realize there is an existing bus rapid transit system. The reason it's not well known is that it is a private system owned and operated by the University at Buffalo it's not open to the public. Buffalo's bus rapid transit was put into place and has operated since plans for light rail fell through for the Buffalo Amherst quarter due to the near bankruptcy of New York City in October 1979. Light rail advocates in Bogota said it needed light rail, but the city went with bus rapid transit to cut costs. Bogota found out the hard way that those who advocated for light rail were right. BRT in Bogota is failing after just 23 years. This is a screenshot from a local Bogota newscast. Notice it says, public transport service in the capital is failing. The video CRT on BRT Part 1 explains why. When deploying bus rapid transit, the main selling point is that BRT capital costs are about half that of light rail, but BRT operational costs quickly catch up. Buses wear out and require replacement after just 13 to 15 years. Replacing worn out buses wipes out the initial savings from bus rapid transit versus light rail. If Bogota had chosen light rail instead of bus rapid transit, they would not be facing the situation of having worn out buses and no light rail transit. Light rail would be operating today at no additional cost. In contrast, Buffalo has kept its bus fleet up to date. New all-electric buses that are smooth riding and quiet are replacing older buses. Our metro rail trains are celebrating their 40th anniversary this year and are still the original carriages. The NFTA has kept them in a state of good repair, making our metro rail cars the lowest cost per passenger mile of any form of transportation besides bicycles. Buffalo seems to always have known that light rail rapid transit is needed to preserve the central business district and connect it with the rest of the region. Cars take up far more space than people. Light rail is the most efficient way to bring people downtown without putting pressure to waste precious downtown space on parking. Here is the dilemma Bogota is currently facing. How can they pay for replacing the worn out BRT buses that are used mainly by the poor at the same time as paying to start up a light rail rapid transit system that everyone can use? What can and should be done right now about congestion caused by the urban highways in Bogota? We here in Buffalo should avoid having to face this same kind of problem and make sure we do not deploy bus rapid transit on the Amherst extension. Bogota is in some sort of contest to see if it is the most congested city in the world. I won't contest whether it is in fact the most congested, but by any measure it is extremely congested. Congestion costs motorists and businesses huge amounts of money making the entire city dysfunctional.
Buffalo, on the other hand, isn't behind the eight ball. Buffalo planned for light rail rapid transit. Buffalo has rights of way already in place for metro rail expansion. Buffalo has always known that bus rapid transit simply can't handle the capacity needs or reduce congestion. Buffalo's light rail system is being fully renovated with new track, catenary, and remodeled stations to make it last another 40 years. The first new extension in decades is about to open in the remodeled DLNW train station downtown. The New York Times articles reported that Bogota motorists resent that buses are taking up lanes that could be used for cars. They don't like having to wait at red lights that give priority to the bus rapid transit buses. They don't like the extra congestion caused by lights stopping traffic for buses. Bus operators have to contend with motorists who don't obey the rules and hog bus lanes that are supposed to be used exclusively by buses. We've known since 1972 that light rail rapid transit is an absolute must for the University at Buffalo. The campus was designed to accommodate light rail and it is essential for the campus operation. The Stampede Bus Rapid Transit service that has been forced to be used has had to curtail its operations due to the worldwide operator shortage. It is not sufficient to handle UB's needs. Because we already have bus rapid transit in the Amherst Quarter, we already know how it fails. CRT says light rail rapid transit is the only sensible solution for the Amherst Buffalo Corridor. Let's get it done now while funding is available.